The skeletal system. We use different body parts to perform different activities in our daily life. This is possible because of the presence of bones and joints in our body. These bones and joints not only provide shape and support to our body, but also protect the internal organs of the body. Bones and joints are parts of the skeletal system. Skeletal system gives shape to the body. Can you identify the animals by looking at the pictures? Since different animals have particular arrangement of bones, it is very easy to find which animal it belongs to by looking at the structures of the bone. The first one is, as you guessed it right, it's fish. The second one, by looking at the bones, you can make out it's a skeleton of a frog. And third one, wow, it's a snake. A rigid framework of bones that provides a definite shape and support to the body is called the skeleton. The skeleton is made of different types of bones arranged in a definite form. Humans have a particular arrangement of bones. Please note only the size that is the length and thickness of the bone varies from person to person. For example, a tall person has longer bones than a short person. The size of the bones also varies in children and adults. Now you see the human skeleton here. So can you identify the components of human skeletal system? The first one is the skull. The second this one is the backbone or the vertebral column. This one is the rib cage, and these are the arm and legs bone. All right, arms and leg bones. And in between, you can see these are the joints. And we'll be learning about joints in the later part of the chapter different types of joints that we have in our body. Now we shall learn how to label a human skeletal system. So this is a human skeleton. You can see this is the skull. This is these are two bony eye sockets and this is the rib cage. These are limb bones and this one is the vertebral column and this is the hip girdle. The skeleton protects our internal organs and also help in physical movement. For example, the skull, it protects our delicate brain. The vertebral column or the backbone, it protects our spinal cord. The bony eye sockets protects the eyeballs. The rib cage protects our heart and our lungs. And the hip girdle, it protects our urinary bladder. Now here you can see the picture of a skull. The skull is the rigid and bony framework of the head. It is made of many flat, hard and strong bones. You know why? Because it has to protect our delicate organ, brain. All right. Now, there are 22 bones in the skull of which eight are flat and interlocked. These bone encloses the brain and they are called cranial bones. This is an important term cranial bones. The remaining 14 bones from the upper and lower jaws as well as part of the part, different parts of other parts of the face. So they are called facial bones. All the bones in the skull except the ones which is in the lower jaw they are fixed. The movement of the bones in the lower jaw help us to chew food and also help us to speak. The skull bone protects the brain, eyes, tongue and internal ears. Now what is the vertebral column? The skull, as you see here, it is attached to the vertebral column which is also called spine. 
the vertebral column forms the main axis of the skeleton and it is made up of 33 bones 33 small and irregular shape bones and these small and irregular shape bones are called vertebrae that is why they make a column like a structure on which the body stands all right so it's like a foundation of our bill bo bo our body all right as you see the buildings they stand on columns similarly this is the column of our body our building all right so there are 33 vertebrae in our body it is made up of 33 vertebrae so these names are given these are not for you to understand but you can see the upper ones they are cervical the middle one which is in purple color they are thoracic the lower one is lumbar and the lowest one is coccyx these are four bones joined together and in between lumbar bone and the coccyx there is a sacrum and these are also fused so they don't move the other one they are very flexible that's why we are able to bend and that's why we are able to walk and stretch also although the vertebrae are linked they are not fused the vertebrae allow us to bend twist and stand upright it also protects the important blood vessels and the delicate spinal cord which is a bundle of nerves now what is a rib cage ribs are flat curved bones which are joined to the spine at the back and the breastbone in the front they form a cage like structure called rib cage the rib cage comprises of 12 pair of 12 pairs of bow shaped ribs out of these 10 pair of ribs are connected to the long flat bones in the center of the chest which is the breastbone the other two pair of ribs are called the floating ribs because they are attached to the spine but they are not attached to the breastbone got it so they are floating in the body but they have one connection they are attached to the spine but not to the breastbone the rib cage is located in our chest area and it protects the lungs and the heart these are two very vital and delicate important organ of our body they are given protection by the rib cage ribs are curved and flexible so they allow our chest to expand and contract when we breathe in and breathe out arm bones the arms are connected to the shoulder blades at the back and to the collar bones in the front the shoulder blades and collar bones form the shoulder girdle the collar bones are in turn connected to the upper part of the breastbone the upper limbs are commonly known as the arms the arms has one long bone which is called the humerus and the lower arm has got two long bones and they are called radius and ulna these bones are joined at the elbow the lower arm also has several small bones which forms the wrist palm and fingers you can see here this is radius this is ulna which is the lower arm and this is our hand this there is a joint here and we'll talk about the joints later on because this is also covered in your chapter these are all movable joints all right you can move them here and there and these are metacarpal these are not in your syllabus but only thing that you have to understand that there are bones in our body and even our, in our hand we have bones all right the lower arm also has several bones which forms the wrist palm and fingers just like the arm bones we have leg bones the lower limb or the legs comprise three bones the longest bone is called the femur or the thigh bone it is present in the upper leg it bears the weight of the entire body actually you try to feel your thighs you will see you, the, you will feel that there is a thick bone there 
so that bone is called the femur and it is the longest bone of your body it is attached to the the femur fits into the hip girdle at the top and is connected to the lower leg at the knee so there are two different types of joints with which femur is attached to in your body to the hip girdle and to the knee the lower leg has two long bones one is called tibia the other one is fibula fibula is towards the outer side and tibia is towards the inner side you won't be able to make difference with you when you touch your lower limb because there are muscles also in between but there are two bones the lower leg has several bones small bones which forms the ankle and toes together they form the foot of your body you can see there are different joints here this is the ankle joint and these are the joints which are there in the toes of your foot it is really very important to take care of your bones because if you don't take care of them your bones become brittle in the old age you will have lot of problems like osteoporosis arthritis so what you should do let's understand it is important to take care of our bones which can be done by having a balanced diet it's not very difficult so you should have food such as milk cheese and yogurt as they are rich in calcium and help our bones to become strong and this is the picture you can see other vegetables also which are helpful in maintaining the good health of your bones broccoli lettuce and uh, almonds cheese milk cabbage so you should have a perfect balanced diet apart from having balanced diet so that bones they get enough nutrients like calcium we should also take care of our bones from getting injured for which we should wear protective gears when we play sports when we play sports like skating when we do biking when we do cycling and when we do roller skates and there is a skateboard also so you should at that time wear all the protective gears while uh, going on a scooter one should wear helmet a helmet protects our skull while knee guards and elbow guard protects the bones of the legs and arms respectively the knee guard it takes care of the patella which is a knee joint and elbow joint now let's revise what are cranial bones cranial bones are 22 bones in the skull of which eight are flat and interlocked these bones enclose the brain and they are called cranial bones how can we take care of our bones it is important to take care of our bones which is done by having a balanced diet we should have foods such as milk cheese and yogurt as they are rich in calcium and help our bones become strong we should protect our bones from being injured for which we should wear protective gears when we play sports a helmet protects our skull while knee guards and elbow guards protects the bone of the legs and arms respectively let's match the columns i am the main axis of the skeleton is it ribs arms vertebral column or skull okay is the vertebral column i am made of flat hard and strong bones ribs arms or skull it cannot be ribs it cannot be arms all right it's the skull third i am joined to the breastbone and backbones so ribs are joined to the backbones and breastbones so there are two floating pair of ribs which are not joined to the breastbone they are called floating ribs the other ones are joined to the spinal cord as well as to the breastbone also last one i am joined to the spine by the shoulder girdle the answer is arms now if i ask you one more question i am joined to the hip girdle then answer will be legs 
now very important topic of our chapter is joints bones are flexible they are flexible because we have got joints in between them and these joints are movable do you remember where we have got immovable joints we have immovable joints in the skull and also the teeth are attached to the jaw with immovable joint all right now joints we can move some part of our body because of these joints a joint is a place where two or more bones are connected at the joint a tough fibrous tissue called the ligament connects one bone to another to strengthen the bone ligament is it not only holds the bones together it also helps them to move a special fluid at the joint acts as a lubricant that prevents bone from rubbing against each other and enables them to move smoothly all joints except a few can move thus we have two types of joint movable and immovable the movable joint in our body are classified into hinge joint ball and socket joint pivot joint and gliding joints all right what about the immovable joints where are they found they are found in the skull and the teeth are attached to the jaw low jaws upper jaw and lower jaw with the help of a immovable joint in joints there are certain joints in our body that allow the movement of bones only in one direction just like the hinge of the door we can move such part in one direction hinge joints are present in the different parts of the body such as fingers elbows knees and toes ball and socket joint ball and socket joints are more flexible than hinge joint because hinge joint can move only in one direction the bones connected to a ball and socket joint can move in many directions one of the bones in the joint has a structure similar to a hollow cup or a socket the ball shaped end of the other bone fits into the socket thus it is called ball and socket joint examples of ball and socket joints are shoulder joints and hip joint pivot joint a pivot joint is another flexible joint it is present between the first and the second vertebrae of the spine below the skull here it is it helps to turn our head sideways a pivot joint is also present between the bones of the forearm the radius and ulna this joint provides for a twisting movement that enables us to open the lid of a jar gliding joint it is one of the free moving joints present between the small bones such as vertebrae wrist and ankles they help the bones to glide or slide against each other they enable us to bend sideways forward and backward and also help us twist and turn immovable joints unlike movable joints immovable joints allow little or no movement there is no cavity or space for the bones to fit in an example is the group of immovable joint that holds the cranial bone together and those present in the teeth and their sockets caring for joints the best way to take care of our joints is to exercise and keep our body moving most of our body weight is supported by the hip back and the knees so we should keep our weight in check through regular exercises also a joint tend to become stiff if they are not moved much so one should make sure to take short breaks and move around indulge oneself in some stretching exercise while studying watching tv or working on a computer what will you write on in a short note on the ball and socket joint you will say ball and socket joints are more flexible than hinge joints the bones connected to a ball and socket joint can move in many directions one of the bones in the joint has a structure similar to a hollow cup or a socket the ball shaped end of the other bone fits into the socket thus it is called ball and socket joint example of ball and socket joints are shoulder joints and hip joints 
what problems would you face if your neck had a hinge joint <laughs> if our neck had a hinge joint then we could move it only in one direction which means we could move it in up and down direction and not sideways then in such a situation it will become very difficult for us to see the things on our sides true or false first joints help bones move in different direction of course true a hinge joint helps move the bones in many direction false a hinge joint helps move bone in only one direction a pivot joint helps our head move only back and forth of course not a pivot joint which is there in our neck it helps us our neck to move not only back and forth but also sideways the bones connected to joint move smoothly because of a fluid which acts like a lubricant true we can take a, take care of our joints by sitting idle of course not we should stretch ourselves we should exercise the statement is false good posture posture is the way we hold our body while sitting standing and moving a good posture means our bones are aligned with our joints ligament and muscles a good posture has many benefits such as uh, there is less stress on our neck shoulder and back we don't experience a back or a neck pain or a headache we can carry on our with our daily activities with more energy and less strains and less fatigue and last we look smart and boost our it boosts our self confidence tips to maintain a good posture we'll talk about sitting posture first uh, sit up straight with your back aligned with the back of the chair see this picture the first picture is correct the second picture is showing the curve the back is not aligned with the back rest of the chair so we should sit like the first boy is sitting this helps to keep your bones and joints properly aligned and reduces the stress on the ligaments maintaining good sitting posture helps in avoiding a backache avoid slouching or a leaning forward bend your knees and keep your feet flat on the floor standing posture in a perfect standing posture we should stand upright keep your head and back straight do not slouch look down or tilt your head back let your hand hang at your sides this posture distributes your weight evenly and it helps you stand comfortably without any ache it also helps in proper digestion of food and it also boosts your self confidence it improves your personality what should be a good walking posture a good walking posture is an extension of a good standing posture look forward and walk with your head held straight avoid slouching looking down at your feet or leaning back this reduces the strain on your neck and back while walking place your heels first and then your toes this helps you to balance your body while walking longer and faster and we should maintain a good posture all the time you can see this picture the second boy is walking straight so we should always walk like that what do you mean by posture and what are the problems posed by a bad posture you will write posture is the way we hold our body while sitting standing or moving moving can be walking the following are the problems posed by a bad posture first uh, we experience back or neck pain and headache quite often we don't have the necessary energy to carry on with our day to day activities and we get tired very fast uh we end up looking less smart and it dampens our self confidence what is a good sitting posture um uh, sit up straight with your back aligned with the back of the chair this helps to keep your bones and joints properly aligned and reduces the stress on the ligaments maintaining a good sitting posture helps in avoiding back ache we should avoid slouching or leaning forward and we should always bend our knees and keep our feet flat on the floor true or false we should always maintain a good posture of course true 
Good posture does not help us in avoiding backache or neck ache. False. Good posture boosts our self-confidence. True. We should always slouch while standing. False. We must avoid pushing our head forward while walking. True.